This is a video pertaining to the area of metalloproteins and their functions in biology, and an examination of the entatic effect, a well-documented phenomena in the area of bioinorganic chemistry. First of all, we define the entatic effect as a state of an atom or group that has bound to a protein that adapts its geometric or electronic condition for function, essentially meaning incredibly high reaction rates can be achieved. We can explain this from an energetic standpoint using the following graph of energy versus reaction coordinate. The red dotted line represents the energetic pathway of irregular catalyzed reactions, from starting material to end products, all in an enzyme substrate complex. The reaction, like every other, has an activation energy barrier that must be overcome to push it forward. The new black line represents the energy profile of a reaction catalyzed by an enzyme with the entatic effect in play. We can see that both the starting material and the end product are raised in energy compared to their non-entatic counterpart by an energy difference known as the strain energy. This introduces a new entatic activation energy barrier, which is smaller than its non-entatic counterpart. This results in an increased rate of reaction, as less energy input is required to drive the reaction forward. The first example we're going to look at of a metalloenzyme utilising the entatic effect is the bacterial rubridoxin. As metalloproteins go, it is a relatively simple short-chain species, with few alpha helices and beta sheet structures, varying between two or three depending on the specific enzyme. Its active site is made up of an iron centre tetrahedrally coordinated to four sulphur atoms, coming from cysteine amino acids from the protein chain. The iron sulphide bond distance is varied between 2.24 and 2.33 angstroms. It is a simple redox enzyme, using rapid electron transfer to catalyse the reduction of dangerous superoxide radicals into diamagnetic hydrogen peroxide, which can then be broken down into oxygen and water by a separate catalase enzyme. The iron centre changes between the plus 2 and plus 3 oxidation states during its activity, during which the iron sulphur bond lengths undergo minuscule changes of around 0.05 angstroms. Both the plus 2 and plus 3 oxidation state are both high spin, to ensure minimal structural change during the process. Compare this to the relatively large bond length changes for the same reaction in a free FES4 complex of around 0.2 angstroms. This suggests that the bond lengths in the rubridoxin are being strained in both Fe2 and Fe3 to resemble transition state geometry, thereby raising the energy and increasing the rate of electron transfer. Our next example is the plastocyanin protein, a member of the well-studied copper blue enzyme family, named so due to its ligand metal charge transfer transition band emitting in the blue wavelength region. It is significantly larger and more complex than a rubridoxin, with several repeating beta sheet sections housing the active site. The active site itself has a heavily distorted or strained tetrahedral geometry, and consists of a copper centre coordinated to two histidines, one cysteine and a methionine residue. The geometry is so distorted that it closely resembles trigonal planar, with the methionine sulphur apex, due to the fact that the copper sulphur bond is so weak and long at around 2.9 angstroms. It is said to have a 3 plus 1 coordination sphere for this reason. The protein functions as an electron transfer agent linking cytochrome F in photosystem 2 to P700 plus in photosystem 1 within plant chlorophyll, making it very important for photosynthesis. The entatic effect for plastocyanin arises from the hard soft acid preferences of copper 1 and copper 2. Copper 1 being of a lower oxidation state and smaller in size makes it a soft acid, preferring soft donors of similar characteristics and vice versa for the hard acid copper 2. The coordination sphere in plastocyanin is an intermediate hard soft donor set, binding a hypothetical copper 1.5 transition state, therefore allowing rapid electron transfer between the destabilized copper 1 and copper 2 species. In addition to constraining the electronic conditions of the copper centre, the bond lengths are also strained to resemble a transition state, further increasing reaction rate between copper 1 and copper 2. The final metalloenzyme studied here is human carbonic anhydrase 2, or HCA2. The structure of HCA2 is visibly adapted for function. We observe several beta sheet protein structures arranged to form a hole or a well in which the active site binds to substrate, and is also prevented from interacting with surrounded water molecules, which would hinder activity. The active site for HCA2 is distorted tetrahedral, consisting of a zinc metal centre bound to three histidine residues and a single water molecule. HCA2 works to catalyse the conversion of carbon dioxide into bicarbonate. The zinc 2 centre is only allowed four coordinate bonds due to the protein structure, meaning it is unsaturated. This results in a very high Lewis acidity as the metal will readily part with its additional electron pairs. The pKa value of the coordinated water is around 7.0, which is significantly lower than that of 3 water, which is around 15, and that in hexaqua zinc complex, which is around 10. 
This becomes relevant when it comes to the activity of the enzyme. It is possible to remove the zinc center to form an apoenzyme, in this case ApoHCA. It can then be replaced with a cobalt ion, producing a working enzyme, albeit with lower activity. This proves that the zinc center serves more purpose than just filling a space. This proves that the zinc center serves more purpose than just filling a space. It distorts the enzyme, resulting in an entatic effect. These three examples don't even scratch the surface of the number of metalloenzymes relevant to life. However, it does give some small insight into the functions of biological catalysts and the importance of inorganic centers in life.